All right, we're gonna man. hang tight here for a minute. Yeah. Yeah, we're live now. What's up, guys? We will be starting the stream in a couple minutes. We got Hillside Goods in the house. Let me just mute everything. Share all the links. Are we just waiting for people to log on or what? Yeah, we usually give it a couple minutes just to let people log in. Because really, um, we start this stuff on Facebook, these big Facebook groups, and then um, we post the links and they come over here. Is it private right now? What's that? Is this private right now? No, no, we're 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 on. Okay. No big deal though. I was Once we move so where it's not like so strangely lit. But if you guys don't care, I don't care. No, you, it's good, man. Okay. But if you feel more comfortable moving, go ahead. It's up to you. I'm good. I just feel like you can't see me, but you can see the hat pretty well. Yeah, we can see you. <laughs> Man, but if you feel we got a lot of people in here already. What's up, Marin? Michael Clark, McNutt, Niren's joining us from the UK. Michael Q, what's happening, guys? We'll start in a couple minutes. Chris K. Oh, Frank. Frank. I think this is the first time Frank's watched us live. How many guys you usually get on the live? You know, it ebbs and flows, man. It depends on the time. Yeah. Um, but we sometimes get like, you know, we'll get 100 at one time. But usually these things will have about 300 to 400 views on, on YouTube, which is, you know, pretty good. You guys haven't been doing it very long, have you? No, no, it's only been like a little bit over a month. Yeah, I like it. That's a good idea. Yeah, it's about four, 14 people on right now with us. We just we just we just hopped on. <laughs> Frank can finally catch us because it's before his bedtime. Yeah, and Chris, we may get some questions for you as we're going. And then, like, once once you and I are done chatting, we'll see if um, Jason has questions for you from, from the folks that are watching. Yeah, no problem. Like I said, whatever. I'm an open book. Come up with some weird question. I'll just let you know. <laughs> <laughs> you have a safe word, Chris. Yeah, lemon tree. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get started, fellas. All right. Hey guys, welcome to uh, Views from the Vault. It's your homie Leon here with our co-hosts Pierre and Jason Mead. We have a very special guest um, joining us today, Chris from uh, Hillside Goods. Uh, he's going to be going under the cap with us, uh, learn about his process, learn about kind of his journey in caps, how he got started, um, what got him interested in art, stuff like that. So um, take it away, Pierre. Well, first, I've got to acknowledge it's the one-year anniversary of the Toronto Raptors winning um, the national, uh, the uh, NBA championship. Correct? That's correct. Yeah. That's so, correct. so, um, so Leon had to had to wear his we we the champs cap today. But um, listen, first, Chris, um, I, I did I did tell you this um, probably a few months ago when I posted on my on my Instagram. But this logo that I'm wearing right now, and you're wearing, and and Leon was wearing, or may wear later on in the show is 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 probably in my top five all-time logos yeah um i mean listen this thing is, and the kraken is not far behind it but this one is my my all-time favorite 
amongst your amongst your work and, and it's, my, it's my top five all time but uh you know all i want to give every what's that chris all time oh all yeah time. oh yeah yeah listen man I, I would i i would put this up there with any logo that's out there um it's clean it's simple but it's it's super sharp looking and and this colorway with the with the navy with the with the or it's 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 incredible man with the green under it's it's probably one of the cleanest caps i've purchased in the last two years um and, I, and I'm not saying that just because you're here. I, I've told Leon that prior to even having you on the show. So um, just, you know, it means a lot to me to get to chat with you today. A lot of folks out there want to learn more about you. And I, and I think they're, they're start, we're starting to have some folks pour in now. So, Chris, I'd love, to, I'd, I'd love it if you just told us a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'm, I'm Chris. I'm a graphic designer by trade. I live just south of Seattle, the city just south of Seattle. Um, I've been doing it for I'm 38 years old. So I've been doing it. I mean, since right out of my college portfolio show, I got hired as a graphic designer and I've been doing it ever since then. I do freelance work, you know, branding for, I've done a bunch of restaurants and bars. And uh, I just started out drawing when I was young. I could always draw naturally, pretty talented. Um, I used to only get art supplies for Christmas and birthdays until I was like 12, 13, I had to tell my parents I wanted something, you know, something different. Yeah, yeah. But I was stocked up by then, you know, they always supported me. Yeah. And I just, through school, I'd always took art classes and I took advanced art classes in high school, graphic design class in high school. And then uh, right, out of right out of high school, I went to college. I went to Seattle Central University. And I got accepted into there. This is a very small program. It's very, it's pretty hard to get into. Uh, I was the youngest person in the program. And I just, it's a two year program and I was out, got hired at my portfolio show. And uh, I've just been doing it ever since. And mostly branding jobs, logo jobs is what I specialize in. That's what I really like to do. And uh, I just started designing hats, I guess, when uh, the clink room just started. I found, I stumbled upon it somehow. And I was just, instantly I was like, this is a no brainer. I've always so wanted hats. So Chris, like going back to when you were a kid and you were drawing, what type of things did you draw? I started out, I would, uh, I would, I was like a card collector, you know, kids in my mm -hmm. age bracket back then, baseball, basketball, football cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would yeah. draw those and I would caricaturize the football players a lot and make the big helmets and stuff. And, uh, and then I moved on to like comic books. I would copy comic books. Okay. And I started. Who's your favorite? Who's your favorite comic book artist? Did you have one? Back then, Spawn, right? So McFarlane. Todd McFarlane. Todd McFarlane. Yeah. yeah. I like Savage Dragon, too. So I think it was Eric Larson, I think. Oh, Eric Larson. Eric Larson, when I was a kid, you know what I called him, Chris? Hmm. The bootleg Todd McFarlane. <laughs> because yeah. if if you remember, you're I'm a little bit older than you, but if you remember, Todd McFarlane drew the Spider-Man comic books. Yeah. It's when Spider-Man really took off and Venom became on, came onto the scene. And then once McFarlane left Amazing Spider-Man, Larson took over. And I used to, and I was, I was kind of pissed because I love Todd McFarlane's art. And yeah. then Eric Larson, to me, he took what McFarlane's art and did it bit, like a little bit bigger and a little bit more comic-y. So yeah. I, I called him the bootleg uh, Todd McFarlane. Yeah, actually, I drew a Savage Dragon. I used to do it a lot in fifth grade, sixth grade. I would draw comic book pages for my friends at school, and I would sell them to them for like mm. five bucks. Yeah. But I got in trouble with the teachers. I had to stop doing it. I don't know why <laughs> they had a problem with it, but... <laughs> And uh, the Savage Dragon, like a big, big head shot on, was like a big seller. I do that one a bunch. Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, Christoph just brought up a very good question. Uh, and I don't know if we covered it in the pre-show, but where did the name Hillside Goods come from? Uh, it was, honestly, it wasn't that hard to come up with because I had to come up with something, right? Well, I came up with that name just for the Hat Club collaboration. Because at the time, I've had previous brands that I kind of just let go by the wayside. But where I live out here, I mean, you guys can see this background. This, this rock wall is my house. My house yeah. is built into a hill. It's like a mid-century modern, late mid-century modern home yeah. built into the side of a hill. So it's literally hillside. And I just thought it just sounded interesting. And it's, you know, everything that I do is sort of inspired by my surroundings, the Pacific Northwest, nature, animals. I just thought it made sense. Yeah, I think, I think that logo, I don't know, it's kind of hard to see, you know, you could, you guys could probably see it on the, um, on the thumbnail that we put on later, but I love that back logo. Yeah. It's just a SH, you know, monogram. 
I guess HS monogram, but just with a yeah. snake, you know, simple, but it would look good small. Yeah, it looks really good. So when you think, so you were doing that art as a kid, so you had some sports influences, you had some comic book influences, which I think are pretty run of the mill for kids, right? We were, we were yeah. all into those as kids. Um, yeah. But all right, so you get into graphic design. Now, when did you first like kind of like enjoy hats? Like, was that like later on or tell us I about was, that part. I was in the hats when I was in, when I was in like fourth, fifth, sixth grade, that was when like the fitted hats and like champion jerseys were like a big hit in my area. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they were like 40 bucks for a jersey, 20 bucks for a hat. And my parents were like, that's too much, you know. So I, yeah. was, I rarely got one. Yeah. But I remember my first, my first fitted hat I got when I was like 12. And it was a University of Alabama hat. Because my grandfather played football at the University of Alabama. All right, cool. And I was just, I, you know, he was like my idol. So I, was, I wanted to get a Bama hat. And I remember it was like, you know, 20 bucks, 21 bucks back then. And uh, I got it. it was, destroyed filthy because it was white with a red bill but i mean that was that was it and i was just whenever i could get one after that when i save up a little money maybe a birthday present here and there yeah that once i got my own money working when i was in high school or whatever i just buy hats all the time so so chris so like um i, I think we have our first lemon tree question so <laughs> someone asked someone asked boxers or briefs <laughs> boxers man OG. all right cool so you didn't even use the lemon tree yet so we're good, yeah, we're good. Yeah. you don't even care about answering that question but um, cool. So like, tell us about like you're you're heading towards a place where you're going to tell us about clink room, right? So tell us about that. Honestly, I was trying to think about this earlier. I don't remember how I stumbled upon them. Yeah. I mean, I can't I can't come up with how, but I just know that I found the site, and they had all these drawings. They were like the behind the scenes of logos that they'd done, and I was, I was just super interested in it. And uh, there's actually there's one post where I don't remember who was Casey or Jason, but they they posted like a picture where or a post about he was carving like the neck of a guitar, like like a bear or something on like the end of a guitar. Or I was like, this guy's like, he was pretty talented, you know? Yeah. I was like, he doesn't just, I don't know, it just it, it intrigued me. And so I yeah. kept, you know, every day I would check it. And then once they posted that first contest, I was like, it seemed like a no brainer. Cause I mean, I've always designed things and I've always worn hats. So it was just mm -hmm. no question. I'm gonna, you know, submit something. Yeah. And that, and and what did you submit? Well, the first time I did it, I didn't really have a good concept of what they were looking for. Yeah. And so I had this idea for uh, Gabacho's tacos. It was like a little chicken, uh, but it was more of like an illustration. It wasn't really like a hat logo. And I submitted it, and he gave me some feedback on what I could change, and I just scrapped the whole thing. <laughs> Actually, I could show you that it's in one of these sketchbooks. Oh, is it? Yeah. If I can find it. But the first one I, just, I submitted that was like a real deal one, I think, was the Sea Devils. And then it won, and it was, you know, pretty popular, pretty successful. So it just kind of went from there. So when you think, like, what, what, what's a no-go for you from a logo standpoint? What, have you, what, what do you see out there that you just, you just can't stand from a logo perspective? I don't like them when they're too big on the hat. I think yeah. proportion is real important. Yeah. I don't like it when the logo is like, you know, like all the way across the panel. Yeah. I don't like that. I don't like them to have like 30 colors, you know. Sure. That's really about, I don't have a lot of pet peeves. It's just my own personal style is simple, two yeah. colors. You, you know? strike me as the kind of guy that's not going to wear an all over cap. Never. I'll probably never wear a yellow hat, you know. It's just navy, yeah. black, yeah. red, maroon. Yeah. You know, if I could only design Navy hats, I probably would. But those, they eventually someone's gonna tell me to stop. So, you so, uh, pro, pro or against uh, side patches? I like them. I don't have any, okay. but I like them. Some of them can get sort of large. Fortunately, they're kind of out of control. I get that they're, they're you know, it's a fad right now. It's kind of a trendy thing, but I like them. I don't own any, and that's only because I wear real basic, yeah, on field hats mostly. Even growing up, all the hats I owned were just on-field hats. I didn't get anything real custom, anything crazy. I would just, I'd have like a 10, 15 rotation. And when one got too dirty, I would just buy another one. And it would yeah. be another on-field hat. So, so that's why so, you see all the hats I designed are pretty much of that nature. You know? So, Chris, you said you were a Seahawks fan. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I'm a Patriots fan. Did, did you know that? You know, that's touchy. Lemon tree. You know. <laughs> <laughs> 
It was Chris, just so you're aware, right? I was watching that game with my dad, right? And I was I was done. I was so pissed, man. I had my um, AFC championship hat. And I was about to throw it in the trash. <laughs> I told my dad because my dad um, loves uh, baseball, but he's not as he doesn't understand football quite as well as he does baseball. And I told him this this shit's done. It's yeah, over. Everybody thought that it's done. And yeah. and I've never had a more drastic turn of events in my entire life than you're giving me Mal- flashbacks right now. When Malcolm Butler just jumped in front of that pass, man, and like, oh my God! And Marshawn Lynch. Right now, I got it. All right, man. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I should have respected you. You did say lemon tree, so we got to move, <laughs> move on from that. Yeah. So, just, um, that's a tough one. Yeah. No. So, Chris, I'm gonna ask you something easier. So, um, that's gonna be easier on you, I think. So, which, which, um, is there any designers out there or or peers out there that really inspire you? Or you're like, wow, I really appreciate this person's work. Specifically in hats? Yeah. Um, I really, really like the work that, uh, you know, the Noble North? Yeah. I think he has a really good designer. I like a lot of his logos. Yeah. I think he hires the guy who does his stuff. He, he's, I like his stuff. It's, it's sharp. It's clean. It's it's just really well done. I like yeah. uh, Chumuko's stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd say those are the top two. Yeah. Oh, that's fair. About, some sort of vintage about, inspired, especially. Uh, yeah. What's up? Yeah. So how about uh, like not in the hat world? What uh, what inspires you uh, as part of your designs and, and stuff um, like that? I got you know I don't really have a designer in mind necessarily. It's just like certain styles I like. I love monograms. Mm-hmm. I like uh, I just like simple. I like simple elegance. I think things it's easy to get things just too much going on, you know. And I don't. I try to dump things down to like the most basic level where it makes the most sense and it still looks really nice. So Chris, what's your, um, uh, what's your favorite sports logo? Ooh, it might be the Atlanta Falcons from the nineties. Ooh. Andre Risen. Yeah. That era. That's up there. That's definitely up there. Uh, it's first thing that comes to mind. I'm sure there's a bunch of others, but yeah, I like the Pittsburgh pirates. Just a simple P. Oh, me too. Mm-hmm. Me too. Detroit. Detroit. Detroit is my Detroit's my number uh, my number three because it's yeah, for me I have to go I have to go Red Sox because I'm yeah. a Red Sox fan then I go um L A then I go Detroit and then next would be Oakland Athletics for me mm-hmm. um and then Pittsburgh Pirates that's mine yeah I like I like all those you names um the A's is so classic it's yeah just, just, yeah I mean the Yankees you can't it's hard I know you're not a Yankees guy but it's hard to it's been around forever. It's barely changed. It's had like five iterations. It's such a classic logo. Yeah. To me, like the Yankees logo, it, it's to me, it's, it's very similar to like a, a pile of shit. So, I mean, it's like, <laughs> kind of. so, <laughs> so those two things kind of go hand in hand for me, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, listen, man, I mean, I, 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 those logos are clean. The, the Yankees logo is a classic logo. I'm not going to, it's, deny. it's what probably close to a hundred years old now. Uh, I'm not sure when they first debuted it, but it was probably in the 20s. Yeah, yeah, but it had some weird, it had some weird variations along the way. Yeah, sure, but it's still that interlocking NY that. Yeah, yeah. I like the Atlanta Braves A also. Oh yeah, as an inspiration for the Natives hat. Yeah, classic A. Yeah, I love it up. I love this Anchorage hat too. Yeah, thank you, thank you. That thing Mm -hmm. is that thing's beautiful, man, and um, the cracking too, man. I just want you to make more, man. (laughs) <laughs> me too Maybe more. <laughs> we have people asking too man yeah we try to we ought to get some we got, they want some pre-orders on this sea uh, devil man yeah i'll tell you what i don't know if that's going to happen but there's more there are more colorways coming yeah if they sell insanely fast maybe it'll happen it seems like hat club's doing more pre-orders now chris here's what i can guarantee you i can guarantee this if you th- if you were able to get 72 sea devils in whatever colorway up on that site they'd be gone in seconds yeah They'd be gone before they'd be gone before that. The yeah. orange logo was sold pretty quick. So I mean But the orange logo wasn't even at the height of it. No. Yeah. Yeah. It was my first one. Yeah. Listen, you yeah. now you any way that any influence you have to get more of those on the site, man, I'm telling you, you'll sell them out in seconds. Yeah. No doubt. I think so. I think they'll work. I think they'll keep selling. It's just a classic logo. People seem to like it. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, I know you have a sketchbook there. Did you want to show us a couple of things or no? I mean, I was looking for that 
that first uh, Gabacho's Tacos one, I think it's in a different sketchbook. I didn't see it. Anywhere, yeah. But is there anything else you like specifically you want to see? No, I think just like I think it's cool to kind of to just show off some sketches because I think I don't think folks realize not everyone realizes what goes into this work. You know, here's the uh, OG uh, Kraken sketches. Oh, that's sick. See what I mean, man? This is the kind of stuff people want to see. You want to see something else? I don't know if people will know this. OG, real old clinkers might know. But when I first submitted that design, it was an O. It was an Orioles-inspired O. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think Casey thought it was too close to the Orioles. Because I was calling it the Octos. And he was like, maybe you could, you know, just change it up. Maybe it's an 8 instead of an O. That was actually his idea. I, I, I so actually think that, that blog post uh, was up on clinkroom.com for a long time because i remember seeing that and then um so yeah this is the Ooh. final where it was like that's you know, badass oh. too man yeah. oh, man. and then, like i said he just didn't he thought i should switch it up which i was actually proud of this because i thought it was a really good illustration well maybe maybe that, hack club will run it <laughs> <laughs> maybe, hack, maybe club hack club will run it yeah maybe hack club doesn't give a shit about how close it looks like the <laughs> good idea i'll run it by him actually yeah. dies eight <laughs> dies eight when it when it gets made <laughs> Give it a shot, man. Here's a uh, that old Seattle grind. Yeah, never to be seen again. I don't think. I like that, man. The old Sea Devils. So, like the Sea Devils. Well, this is the original drawing for the Octos. Well, that's bad. Nice. Yeah. So listen. So so really quick, Chris. Right. Like like your your process. So you you've sketched something, right? What's next? I draw it until. I draw it until the flow is right, until it's smooth and it yeah. flows right. I don't go to digital until the proportions are good. Yeah. Small things can always be tweaked digital, but a lot of stuff I do is uh, organic, animals, nature. And so yeah. it's really flowy. It's got to have like the right feel to it. So I always draw that first. And then I'll scan it and take it into whatever graphic program I'm using. Yeah. Smooth it all out. See, it's interesting because you deal with different artists that, that understand what you need to do to make it look right on a hat. Some people don't get it, right? But like you clearly have gotten how simple and just clean it needs to look on a hat. And listen, man, it's impressive. It's impressive. Yeah, it's a different kind of it's a different kind of design. Like I said, I didn't get it at first. You know, with that first tacos logo, I didn't. I didn't get it. I had never done a hat, and I quickly found out. You know, it's got to be. You know, it's, it's it can't be too tall. You know, people yeah. forget it's pretty small. Yeah. You no, know, it's got to be sort of square. And it's got to be simple and it's got to fit on the canvas, you know? Yeah. Right. So, so um, Chris, we're kind of getting towards the end of the journey here. So we've, we've talked through like some of your process. We talked through the first, um, the, your first portion of, of, of your time with clink room. Now tell us about how you transitioned to hat club. Well, I was always, I knew about hat club. I bought a few hats from them and uh, I knew they did customs, but one day I saw on their Instagram page, there's a custom, and it's, it slips my mind which exact hat it was, but I knew I had seen it uh, through the clink room. And I was like, you know, the light bulb went off. I was like, if they can reproduce an old clink room hat, let me just get in touch with them and you know, see what's going on. And so I sent a private message to the account. I don't know who manages their account, but I told them who I was, you know, told them I designed the Sea Devils and some other hats. And that, you know, that always sold well. And would they be interested if I could, you know, design them some hats and so they passed on to the buyer john and mm -hmm. uh, he was like yeah let's do it t800 like, john guys t800 like, john right what's that t800 john we try to get his instagram out there for everybody because they can yeah. they can bug him so he was like let's do it yeah he's like what do you have send me some stuff and so i sent him a few things and he was like done he's like let's do it i was like well the the tech pack for the was already out there new air already has it it's to switch up some logos or some colors, I mean, and get them going. And then from there, I started designing new stuff. And that was that. Yeah, so that's the, the start of a great relationship, right? Yeah, it's the beginnings. It's looking good. So um, what what can you share is on the horizon for you with us? Like, if you can't share, I understand. Um, but, like, what, what's next for you? Like, what, what's, what, what's next? More of the same for now. I got okay. five more lined up in the queue ready to be made once New York gets back you know, to hundred percent. Yeah. And I was thinking, this is just me kind of, I'm not final on this, but I was thinking my first 10 hats are all going to be in the same vein, right? That's kind of what I've done. Like one color, yeah. animal, 
monogram letter, that yeah. kind of style. Yeah. And I was debating maybe doing my next 10 hats in a different style. Sort of like a fashion season, right? Like fall, yeah, spring. Yeah, yeah. Thinking about doing like mascots, like vintage mascot styles, you know, Ooh. just sort of like something. Because I've always liked that, but I've never really done. I've only designed three or four of them ever. Yeah. But I enjoy it. Yeah. I like how they look. So I might, I might go that direction. Man, that's not cool, comments. man. I don't know about everybody else. Hey, if that's a good idea or not. So, um, so Chris, I, I'd love it if, if we could end on this because we're about to get into a hat battle. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of get you up to speed on some of these contestants in a second. Um, but if there's anything out there that you could share with us that that we don't already know that's important to know about you, what would it be? About me personally? Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't, I'm not really the. I'm just the guy who makes logos, man. You know, if you like my hats, you keep buying them. That's important to me. But <laughs> otherwise, I'm just the guy behind behind the logo. You know, I'm yeah. not. I'm not. I don't need to be out there in the front. I like it. I like it, Chris. This was a great conversation. I really appreciate you coming on with us um, to you. talk. To, Thanks for having me. Listen, we love getting under the cap with folks like you and learning more about the process and more how, about how you create and. Listen, you're bringing a lot. You're bringing a lot to the hat game right now, and we all love it. So, um, I'll tell you thanks. what, I got some stories. You know, we do a volume two one day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, well, you know what? No, we got time for one story. Why don't you tell us one? Okay. Uh, so here's a story. So this is the original Sea Devils hat. Yeah, you know, the new era, green bill. Yep. But it's a snapback. Uh oh. That doesn't seem right. So nobody has seen this. Nobody has seen this. Well, I mean, a handful of people. But what happened was New Era or the Clink Room, somebody mislabeled or mistagged the, the logo within the catalog of New Era. And it was available for anybody to use by mistake. So I got an Instagram message, a DM from someone, a friend of mine. And he was like, hey, uh, ECAP City is selling your hat in a snapback. <laughs> And I was like, well, I'm not, I haven't gotten a check for that. So let me see what's going on with this. <laughs> it's news to me, right? Yeah. So I hit him up and, oh, I think I tagged, I think the clink room on the post too. And, you know, it was an honest mistake. They just liked the logo and it was available. So they used it and they had a run made. And uh, when Casey reached out to him from the clink room, they were like, okay, we'll pull him down. You know, we didn't know. So I contacted him and I was like, look, man, what are you going to do with these hats? And he's like, well, I, He's like, I'm not going to sell them. But I had a feeling he was going to sell them. Why would you not, right? You got, you got the money invested. Yeah. I'm like, just sell them to me. I'll buy them. You know, I was like, sell them to me for your wholesale. You won't lose any money. I think he only had like 10 made. And I was going to buy them all. But I felt sort of funny about like buying my own hat back. But yeah. I never got paid for it in the first place. Yeah. He bought like five or six of them. So the other ones, other four or five, I don't know. Maybe they got bought. Maybe they're just sitting in the basement somewhere. I couldn't tell you. Listen, I, I mean, I got some if anybody's interested, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll buy one. I'll buy one. I'll buy. I'll buy. I'll buy. I'll buy. Chris, I think you just sold them all. Chris, I'll, <laughs> Chris, I'll, Chris, I'll buy time. one. I'll buy one, and I'll make sure no one in public ever sees it. Because <laughs> I, I'd want it for my personal collection. We can talk after this. I'll tell you what. Yeah, yeah. one, one more question from the crowd. Uh, one, everybody wants to know what's in the cup. What you oh, sipping on there? Just the bourbon guy. Love I mean, it, man. Love it. Saturday. So Chris, are you ready? To, are you ready to get this party started with this uh with this hat battle or what? Let's do it. All right, so listen. I gotta warn you, there's one guy coming on. His name is Dwayne. Okay. He goes by Dank One the Vandal. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, you know of him, right? He loves your stuff too. He also he's admittedly he told me he was the biggest uh, smut peddler in the city of Atlanta. <laughs> So there's one day I was cruising through um, Facebook. Oh, telling me this. Well, I'm with, uh, <laughs> I want to warn you, man. I don't know what this guy's going to do on here, okay? So okay. I was going through my Facebook, and I'm looking at a hat post, and I'm going through all the comments, and then all of a sudden there's just this thick, beautiful woman in the middle of all of the comments, and it's him. He had a whole bunch of hat pictures, and then there's one picture of a woman. And I was like, what the hell is this? And he said he left it there just for all of us as a, as a, as a little tease. Like he wanted to make sure that we were paying attention to his posts. Where is he? He's not even on. Yeah. We're waiting for him. Yeah. <clears throat> Send him the link. 
Yeah. One more one more question for you, Chris. Did yeah. you ever think about doing? I know you're a big fan of the green underway under under visor. Would you ever think about doing a different color one? Yeah, I would consider it. You know, when things get things get maybe not stale, but maybe this. I love, I think everything should have a green underbill, assuming it matches the hat. Like the natives, I didn't do because I thought would, the green on the olive yeah. maybe wouldn't look that great. I like yeah. the gray on this one. Yeah. yeah. Any dark colored hat, I think should have a green underbill. But again, you know, there's always could go another way for sure. I mean, I assume they're I assume they're talking about like the pink bottoms and the blue bottoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I, people I, I, people people think I'm a pink bottom guy. I'm actually a green bottom guy. Yeah, me too. Me too. Green's the way to go, man. I I do like pink though. I'm not gonna lie. But but green. What, I'm not I'm not gonna go down any any probably any trendy, you know, yeah. any kind of like what's happening now type trends. Yeah. I'm not opposed to different color under under the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. But green's classic, man. That's what we grew up yeah, you with. You gotta go green. I mean, I know, green and navy specifically. Yeah. When you yeah. do green and navy, man, it's incredible. Yeah. We're just waiting on uh, we're just waiting on uh, Dwayne here. This was supposed to have a green. Yeah, I got a gray. Uh, for the record, something happened in production. I don't know. I still like it though, man. Yeah, it's still it's still a solid hat, but yeah, it's supposed to have green. All right. So Dwayne's having a little technical difficulties. I'm going to tell him to try again. He thought he was in. So Dwayne's probably putting another Easter egg on Facebook right now. Yeah. <laughs> He's probably digging through another crate of hats last minute. He did. Just, do, do you, you want to um, go through the rule? Ooh, Ooh, what the hell? Oh. Where'd that that's one come from? from? This is a clink release. That's the clink room. Yeah. 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 Okay. Got the logo on the back. Jesus, nice. they made this without without consulting me. I was a little bummed about that. Oh really? Because mm. I would have never did that colorway. You guys want to? You guys want to hat battle him? Couple <laughs> 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 couple gems. All right. So yeah, while uh, while we're waiting for Dwayne, we'll. Uh... Oh look at this! Oh, damn. Hell, damn. Had a buddy of mine who's a shoe customizer black it out. Oh nice. You're a, big, you're a big shoe guy too, right, Chris? I mean, yeah. you've slowed down because kids will kids will do that to us. But you're a big shoe guy. Yeah, I've been I've been in the shoes heavy for a long time. Yeah. What's right. um what's what's your shoe of choice? What's your style of choice? Air Max ones, Jordan threes and fours, Spirit ons. How do you slept on Spirit? OG Spirit ons from '97. Mm. That's most of it. Threes and fours basically these days. Yeah, I love threes. Threes are easy. I'm ones, three, ones and threes. Air Max nineties. I'm three, four, and eleven. Yeah, oh yeah, those are the classics too. Classics. Red and white, man. Yeah. Case, do you want to uh, go over the rules one more time? Yeah. So while we're waiting for Dwayne to come on, uh, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to go five rounds, um, and uh, the categories are going to be. Uh, major league, which could be any of the major leagues, uh, MLB, and NHL, NFL, NBA. Uh, round two, we're going to go minor league or college. Round three, we're going to go custom. So that could be a store custom, uh, custom, private, custom, whatever. Just something that's not on field. Uh, round four, we're going to go exclusive. So a hat you could only have ever bought at one place, whether that be a stadium, a store, whatever and then the fifth round we're going to go a wild card any hat you want to show bring your bring your heat uh and <clears throat> the judging is going to work a little differently this time around uh the judges here are going to send me their their favorite hats um privately and then we'll uh tally up the scores and at the end of the match we'll, re we'll uh, reveal the winner um kind of like in a, a boxing match that's going the distance sound good to everyone What's yeah. the, what's the, is there a prize? Uh, bragging rights. <laughs> and they, they move on to the next round of our King of the Crown tournament. Is there a grand prize at the end? Usually there is. There's We're a, working on it. Yeah. We've given away some mm -hmm. T-shirts, hats, pins, stuff like that. Yeah. Right. But this is like a uh, preliminary matchup. It's a bit uh, onto a bigger bracket. Oh, it's a bracket stuff. Rang it. Yeah. It's yeah, a, you're in. You're in. 
it's a bracket style. And, and listen, if anyone has a hillside that they're going to show, I, I would probably pull that out because you may get some extra points. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And so we, uh, we predetermined the order by random draw. Um, so this first round, uh, D sharp is going to go first and then it will be, uh, uh, dank and then, and then D lock. And then the next round dank will go first and we'll just keep rotating from there. All right. Perfect. All right, so I'm going to start with the uh, Major League. This is something I got in uh, 2015 directly from New Era. <laughs> cap. Uh, had a lot of bad feelings with that cap. Leon, you might have seen it. It's that 2015, um, 4th of mm -hmm. July, yeah, that yeah. they messed up with uh, the American flag in the back, basically. So, <laughs> Remember, as always, like the Jays never has those 4th of, July, 4th of July caps. So they sent me this. And I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, for sure, guys over the seas are going to flip over this because you always know how you guys don't like the Canadian flag over the U.S. flag. So this is that one of a kind. I think that I saw like five or six floating around but they never, uh, they never went more than that. And for some obvious reason, nobody will wear that. So yeah, <laughs> that's my, uh, my baseball joints. Thanks, Derek. Dwayne, what you got? All right, you ready? Yep. We got the San Diego Prize running from Billion Creation and Herringbone, Herringbone Leather. Leather brim, sweet all over. Ooh. Ooh. We also have a little dope liner inside. That's pretty sweet. Is it is it like ostrich on the bill? Let me see the, the material. Nah, leather. Leather? Yeah, I have the ostrich one though. The white one. <laughs> yeah. This one, San Diego Pride Blades herringbone. Leather. I'm happy you went with the leather because ostrich, I hear, are very aggressive animals. Let's <laughs> see the liner. Yep, yep. That's pretty yeah. sweet. Nice. All right, D Lock. All right. So, about the turn of. Uh, can y'all guys hear me? I'm just making sure my mic's yep. on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Very okay. perfect. All right. So, uh, about the turn of last decade. Of course, the Rangers were hot, you know, 10 and 11, won, won the AL. I was that lucky enough to go to a couple games, you know, it was a little four-hour trip from Houston, still a four-hour trip now that I'm in West Texas. I remember one play, like, we saw, we were at the game, and I saw C.J. Wilson hustle to first base on a little, you know, short little ground ball or whatever it was, and he put his hands up like this. Didn't know what the hell he was doing. Did a little research. At the time, they were going with their claw and antlers. Claw, get on base, antlers for a hustle play. So as soon as I found this one, I knew I had to grab it. Got the, uh, the, ant, the antlers with the old flawless style T, white flag. The cool thing is it actually doesn't have the MLB logo on the back. That's where they put the claw. <laughs> nice. And of course, at the time, they were still using the blue squatchy, so kind of match the on-field in a certain way, too. All right, judges, send me your scores. It's a pretty hefty round. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's go on to the next round. Who's up, me? Uh, you are up, yep. All right. Um, going. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going. Um, custom. Maybe somebody here could help me with this logo. <laughs> oh man! It's What's that one, <laughs> What's that one? What's that one? What's that one? <laughs> he's using his own. He's using his own custom <laughs> against them. <laughs> Look, I told you I had a plan. Then I thought about it. Everybody has a plan to get punched in the mouth. <laughs> Mike Tyson quote. 
And of course, you got the B Up logo on the back, navy and gray all over. Love it. Black underbrim. Dang. All right. <laughs> that's that that's cold that's cold but i mean that's that's all fair and, and, and more here so v lock what do you got for uh i guess we want to go custom on this one yeah that's cool that's cool uh actually i'm gonna go with the navy one too could match this jersey um it's a guy on uh over on ig called new england fitteds um i haven't actually talked to the guy i'm not sure exactly who it is but i know he's new england fitteds this was a really cool one he did the gettysburg phantoms Mm -hmm. Got that old Civil War style hat on him, the nice khaki, uh, squatchy and eyelets. It actually does glow in the dark on the uh, on the Phantom Ghost there, and then that nice old school looking. Uh, I say old school. I know it's just cursive, but when you think <laughs> cursive, you always think old school. So nice. I, I have that one. I love that hat. All right, D sharp. All right, so since everybody is going with somebody's custom, I rolled my third beaver. So it's a black on black with just uh, basically some white element bat baseball, Quebec flag on the side, black on black. Uh, the other guy that was working with me on the back, made in USA. Uh, I don't, I can't even remember why. I was able to got them made in the U.S. for real. They came in and the guy was like, they got made in the U.S. I hope it doesn't matter to you. And let's be honest, right now, this is some kind of exclusive to be made in the U.S. So, yeah. So, black on black, beaver, just a bit of white. I'm trying to let you guys yeah. see. The it's a bit Hard of see anything. Yeah. yeah, I see it. Yeah. So that's it. Yeah. All right. It's a tough round. Dwayne's playing dirty, but uh, judges, let me see some of your scores. And then Dwayne, D-Lock. The old ones, because I went 2-0 and o using my <laughs> customs on my last two battles. So I know what he's been watching. <laughs> All right, and then uh, D-Lock, you're up for the third round. All right, cool. We're going to go to the minors. Um, this one was actually... This is what re kind of what started me getting into really collecting. I kind of worked, at, you know, I worked at, at lids and everything and bought hats for years and wore hats for years. But this one was uh, actually from another collector. This is the first experience I really had somebody else helping me out back in like 2014 over on the New Era Cap Talk site. Uh, okay. Very, uh, like I said, it's about 2014 or so. It's a Clearwater Threshers pitch for pink. This was before they really did Mother's Day, um, you know, on fields and everything. You had Clearwater down there actually doing the pitch for pink. I never really, well, my wife really never cares when I wear pink and red together. But, you know, on this hat, I thought it was a cool little nod to that. And then, of course, it has the, uh, the pink Batterman, that real light pink on the back. This is my, this is my go-to for Valentine's Day every year just because of the pink and red. Nice. All right, D Sharp. We got for the minor, right? Yeah, minor league. So, yep. all right. Uh, I'm going to throw something really deep out. But yeah, so I had a plan about two years ago trying to find and collect every minor league caps from Expos related. Uh, it went back and forth, was able to find some uh, vintage one on eBay and all that stuff. And I got the chance to create some. So this is the first one, the Rockford Expo that I got made. No minor league baseball logo on the back. Uh, guy, I was supposed to have green sweatband, uh, green under visor as well, but they came in with the uh, gray under visor. Really doesn't matter. It was just for the logo. So yeah, so Rockford Expos. Pretty cool. Never seen that before. Ever. Thanks. It was a hard find trying to get the original photos from that time and got it made like try to get as close as we can get them. Yeah. That's pretty clutch. Thanks. All right, Dwayne. What dirty tricks are you going to play this round? All right. <laughs> right. 
Yep, yeah, my league. One of my favorite blackouts from 2019. Tri City Dust Devils, the Veneros. I love this hat just because the embroidery on it. They made the great extremely thick so you can feel them. I mean, it's just the, the accents on it are just crazy. What color is that? Is it like a neon? Yeah, like a volt green. Volt green. <laughs> Yeah, Lids did a, a blackout uh, exclusive yeah, line custom last exclusive year. From the store, in-store Lids, uh, the Tri-City Dust Devils, it's a Venero blackout. It took me a little while to get this one. <laughs> Just having to uh, kiss some ass, I guess, and, <laughs> and get all the <laughs> <that> I needed. <laughs> and I see you I see you went with, uh, with uh, a bribery cap as well. A bribery <laughs> cap. I see what you did there, Dwayne. Oh, you do? I like the hat, though. That is a nice hat. Thank you very much. I like yours. <laughs> <laughs> Leon, Leon, did you catch that? Did you catch the catch? You caught yours, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Judge, assume your scores for that round. And I think uh, I think we're back to D sharp. Uh, we got the uh, wild card and exclusive left. Yeah. So I'm going to throw in, um, we're going to go with exclusive. So I'm going to go with something that I got, I think was last year. So this was given to New Era people, uh, designers and stuff. So New Mm. Era versus everybody. Uh, I got to say, it's pretty clean and it's quite simple, but does a perfect good job of showing the brand and ripping the the vibe no uh no no under visor color just black nothing uh, fancy but I, I love this cap very cool Dwayne all right um I got another one I might need to help with here maybe, maybe you can help me with this one <laughs> man He's going, he's going for blood. <laughs> hey, you got to be in it to win it. <laughs> we got the casters. I'm going to tell you, I know some of y'all don't like white fronts. I, I personally do just because they remind me of the early 2000s here in Atlanta where this was kind of like what we used to call a classic player look. You had the dark in the back and the white in the front here. Oh, man. This was one of my favorite customs when I finally found it. I ain't gonna lie, I, I damn near uh, never mind, I'm not gonna say anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> Just no, it, it, I was excited. So who made that custom, Dwayne? That would be uh, our young uh, man there by the name of Lee Kid 26 there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Derek. I appreciate this one. <laughs> well, the first one, and funny thing about this one, they New Era messed up two hats from that production, like in the middle, like the, the, the sewing in the middle was like so wide that you were able to see basically the, the inner of the hat. So New wow. Era 2 Express, they got shipped to my house and I can't even remember who's got them, but both of them were made in the US. And <laughs> we, we both know how everything works with US and China. You were able to see the difference of every shade in the logo and in the cap how badly it was, but the, those two guys that got the USA, they were more than happy. <laughs> sure. All right, D-Lock, what you got for exclusives? All right. So uh, exclusive, um, I live about five minutes from the ballpark here in Midland. And uh, this is one that was only available there. It was on their website, but you know, y'all know how crazy the, the shipping prices are. So, you know, I, I count that as exclusive because not a lot of people are going to pay that. It's uh, one of the old school team names that the uh, Rockhounds used to use. They were the Midland Cubs. Ooh, got that mm. wing in the cub. The pinstripe jersey. This is actually kind of different because I've done some research on this logo now. This M was not the M that they used on the on-field hat. It was more of a simple classic M with a white outline, but I love that giant red M on the side. It just really pops got that white flag and then the, just that red, white, and blue MILB batterman. So, yeah, the old Midland Cubs. Nice. Pretty cool. 
All right, judges, send me your scores for that round. And then Dwayne, you get the honors of kicking off what would be the wild card. So any hat? All right, we're going, we're going hard. Gotta go hard. All right, got a little bit of unboxing here. Going with the Apollo 11 landing, moon landing. All over cap. Going to Japan. Of course, the underbrim is dope as hell. This is one of those caps when I, another one, when I saw it, I, I got excited. Thanks to Chase for this one. He hooked me up really nicely on this one. Nice. Yeah. A nice one. And of course, you know, you have the date. June 20th, 1969 on the back. Apollo 11's uh, patch on the side. Very cool. Nice. All right, D-Lock. All right. So, you know, if anybody's been kind of following me over on Instagram or anywhere, I finally, earlier this year, finished the NHL collection. Um, so I had to go and, and find one out of there. But I had to go get a new one that actually gave me a second one for a certain team because this logo is just too hard to find on anything. Now, this hat is something it's, it's not a lot of wear because it's crazy pinwheel color, but it got uh, uh, coyotes. It's got that old lizard on there, too. Again, this crazy pinwheel, it's, it's not a lot up on this wall, but I love it and got that. That blacked out NHL logo, just that black under there. But yeah, that old Kachina, as soon as I found this, I pulled the trigger. I wasn't even going to wait around. I made <laughs> sure to add that to the collection. So, very awesome. All right. I need to find one of the, the coyotes that I don't own right now. This is the one I, I need to find. The Kachina logo, I don't know why, but man, this was probably one of the, I think after the Ducks. Retro Ducks logo. This was one of my favorite hockey logo. Yeah, I, late late last year I found one, just the solid black with the full body Kachina, but it was a size seven. So I shot it over to Marin real quick, <laughs> made sure she at least somebody that I knew had that hat. D Lock, too bad for you. Marin's not voting today. Yeah, hey, hey, <laughs> I put, I know it, but hey, I'll, I'll help anybody out that way. All right, D Sharp, what do you got for your wild card? So um, some of you knows me, I, I went to uh, New Era Buffalo with uh, basically all the guys from Crew Era, uh, met Ben, who's now a hat club, uh, huge friend of mine now. And we've been talking how he's an Expo fan. I'm an Expo fan. So he's sending me, as soon as we went, uh, we came back home, he sent me a cap that to me is probably, I will say the most heartbreaking memories for me. So it's basically the 2003 Montreal Expo Puerto Rico series. So that was basically the beginning of the end for the Expos. They were playing half their own game at Puerto Rico, the other half of the season in Montreal with 10,000 people. And it was, I got to say, really sad. This one is a seven and a quarter and uh, old seven and a quarter so it doesn't fit me at all so it's in a glass case and it's just it's never seeing uh, my head never seeing the sun outside because of uh, those old ones I probably say that it fits like a maybe a seven and one eight since it's a so old school one right. so yeah, expo still has that that old ass sticker it was about to peel off but <laughs> I don't want to remove it all right all right judges need your final round scores All right. Well, final scores are in. And this was a very close battle. It actually went back and forth. Um, but finishing up in second place by one point is D Lock. Congratulations, D Lock. That's awesome. And in first place, winning the final round 
winning enough points to take it over by one point. La Kid, Oof. What? the D Sharp pulls it out. By one point, he uh, he actually swept that final round, Woof. and uh, and pulled out the win. Yep, congratulations. Thanks, thanks, guys. It was uh, yeah. Well, guys, guys, I thank you for the entertaining battle, man. And um, uh, I know Dwayne and D-Lock, you guys will be back at some point. So oh, oh yeah, I really Absolutely. appreciate I really appreciate the showmanship and um, Dwayne, I appreciate um the hat switches. I, I appreciate all you guys did. So thank you so much for coming on guys. Although, although if we have Dwayne on again, we may not reveal his opponent beforehand. So he can't yeah. use their own hats yeah, yeah. against them. <laughs> <laughs> he may have used the hats, but I did do a little Instagram stalking and two of D sharps. I knew which ones he was using that new air versus everybody. And that maple leaf with the, the flag. I knew those two yeah. were coming. Out. Let, yeah. Let's talk about the fact that, when I woke up this morning, I had a like on the cap from 2013. <laughs> that like, and I was like, man, he really went that far. Like a big, okay. Okay. Listen, man, I, I got to tell you, my hat of the day was the minor league custom. That was yeah. the hat of the day for me. Yeah, that was cool. Ooh, yeah. And yeah. I, I talked with Ben about this. And since they're now, they, they're made basically at club if they want to do it. It's free to them. I made a couple of ones, but I won't show them now, you know, but they're all on my Instagram. But like I said to, yeah. to, to Ben at Hat Club, if you guys want to do it for people out there that are looking for it, and one of them that I'd never found and I never got the chance to make to be made was made by um, basically by minor league baseball, the hometown collection, yeah, uh, mm. Quebec Carnival. Yeah. It's in transit from Cooper to my place, and with <laughs> the post now, it sucks. So I don't know where that, where they are right now. Well, right. well, listen. Uh, maybe you'll be using that in the next battle. Maybe I have another another couples. Maybe I'm. <laughs> wait, I just need to. You know, I didn't want to throw everything right now. Yeah. 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 Sure. Listen, I, I appreciate it again, guys. We're gonna let you guys go, and we're gonna wrap up. Thanks for being on. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys. Thanks, it's been guys. fun. Chris, don't go anywhere. I got a little sneak peek if you want to see a little sketch. Ooh. We're gonna yeah. end with, we're gonna end with a little sneak peek. All right. So now these guys aren't gonna leave. Look. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, Dwayne's like, fuck you, I'm staying. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing cool. else to do, so yeah, well, you can stay, stay on. It's it's cool. Yeah, yeah. Right, I'm not gonna be made for a while. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Oh, oh that's bad. Oh. Whale tail. With a, with a, it's like a gray whale concept. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. I like it. Oh, that's not the final whale. Don't, don't, say, don't say whale tail in front of uh, Dwayne, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need this guy getting all excited. But listen, that was, that's, that, that's, that's badass, man. What's, uh, what's the C stand for? The G. G. For oh, gray G. Whale. Okay. Yeah, okay. Like, I'm going to call it the Grays, I think. The, the Grays. Nice. Huh? Like it. You might forget about that. It's going to be a while before it probably comes out. So maybe it'll be a surprise in a few months. Okay. Well, we'll, 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 um, we'll, we'll definitely be watching very closely. So, um, guys, I think, um, I, Leon, you want to let everybody know what's coming up next? or? Uh, yeah. So we will be doing a live uh, on Instagram tomorrow with uh, Pierre and Jason. Jason's going to be going over his top nine, right? That's It'll tomorrow. be tonight, actually. We're gonna... Actually, tonight. tonight. Later okay. tonight, yep. Okay, so that's happening tonight. Um, we'll also be going through uh, – I'm going to be doing a top five of the uh, Raptor Championship hats with Pierre. We're going to be putting that straight to YouTube. And then Wednesday, we'll be doing our regular – back to regular programming, um, Views from the Vault, week nine. So, yeah. And we're also experimenting with something. We can kind of let everyone a little sneak peek. We're going to be doing um, uh, <laughs> um, late night in the vault. So yes. late night in the vault is going to be like, you know, anybody who wants to participate, we can get us like 20 people. in this. Like a smut pillar event. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dwayne, you're not, Dwayne, you're not allowed, but it's, it's <laughs> I go where I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to have like uh 
late night at late night in the vault and it's going to be just uh we're just going to have a bunch of people on we're just going to talk so um just kind of more of an open forum without any structure to it which i think will be pretty cool talk about whatever we want man i think um you know but remember leon and i have the power um to to expel you from the room um so <laughs> If things go off the rails, we can expel you from the room. That's the one power we do have, the only power that we have. But um, but listen, I think we're gonna have a lot of real cool stuff coming up for you guys. So um, we're looking. For that? You. When's that? What's that? When's when are you doing that one? Those are gonna be on Friday nights. So <laughs> um, Chris, after we get the kids to bed, it's time for it's time for late night in the vault. I'm West Coast man. I'm Seattle. I don't know what time you're talking about. <laughs> listen, we'll do a special event for you at 2 a.m. <laughs> so that like 11 p.m your time i might have some bourbon in me by then that's what that's what we're looking for though <laughs> that's exactly what we're looking for so um guys we'll have a great day. you want to take them you want to take them away leon yeah guys we will uh thanks for joining um make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and we will catch you guys wednesday stay All fitted right. peace guys all right